See, losing is no fun. You know, you've got to win. <laughs> you can't mess around with losers. Fangio was a gentleman, he was a, a fantastic driver, and um, unfortunately, of course, I've never spoke to him, because he could only speak Spanish, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I'm sure, I'm sure he had a piece of my girlfriend, that little mom, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, terribly afraid of death because I love life, and so that means that I'm afraid of death. Yeah. But there's nothing one can do about it. I I understand that it was very important to you when you were racing a lot to tailor the cars exactly to your needs. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about that? Well, when. when you go and you do a wrecking of the circuit. Then you work out the gear ratios. Mm -hmm. get, get the correct gear ratios for, for the, because every circuit's different. And so you get the car to the, you get the car to handle in the way that you like. Mm -hmm. In other words, you you try to reduce understeer. Um, you know, sometimes you, you, you incur uh, oversteer and things like that. And so you get the, you get the car set up the, the, to suit the, your style of driving, because my my uh, if I took over say Jack Brabham's car or anybody else's, I'd be a lot slower than they would, and they would hopefully be slower than I would, you know. So you're essentially setting the car so that it performs as best as possible. Yeah, cu customized. But is it also so that it's as comfortable as possible? Thing where things are located, or or is it just performance based? No, because no, because you, you obviously get you, you you take the cockpit of the mm -hmm. car, you put you put just the seat in it, and then then you try to get it so that everything is is exactly where you'd like it. I mean, some people like a central accelerator. I don't, never did. I like the accelerator on the right, but you, if, there are certain drivers who do it the other way, and so I, I make the I make the car. Or put the car in its in its best position, uh, handling wise, um, that, that I can get for, for my for my style of driving. Okay. And you do that to some extent with houses too, don't you? You you like yeah. gadgets oh, in houses, and your yeah. do you see a link between those two? Um, well, just just, uh, just uh, obviously. If you have a house, you customize it the way you want it. You want a little clock here, you want this there, and so on and so forth. Well, exactly the same with a car. You set the car up to handle in the way that you like it to handle. Mm -hmm. And so, what is it that you like about getting things to handle in the way that you handle? Well, just because it's more efficient if you know exactly what you want to do, uh, what, what you're going to use in, in your demonstration or whatever it is uh, and those things have to be uh, they, they have to be easily uh, acceptable you know so in other words the pedals you, you have one pedal goes one side of the, of the, of the dry shop one the other mm -hmm. it's important that, the, that, that where these things are that you should know they, they should come to hand um, you know quite easily so it's really about efficiency. Yes, efficient. Yeah, I guess efficiency is as good a word as you'll get. Yeah. So your your best known gadget, possibly ever, yeah. is one that you created yourself for the Mille Miglia when yeah. you won the Mille Miglia in in record time. Tell us a little bit about this well, we, gadget. We, we, we had a thing which we which we call the. Um, um, the, 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 
the toilet roll because it didn't wind it on. And it's in a small thing about this size, not mm -hmm. much bigger than that. And uh, as we're going along, Jenks is giving me signals. We've got the whole whole circuit, which is a thousand miles, and the whole circuit we have on written into into this gadget, the, which we call you know the the t toilet roll. In there are uh, things that so that when Jenks was reading it, he could say, if I'm coming up to a, a brow of a hill, he could say, right, flat out, or slow down, or slow down more, and take, go right and go right. He, he was giving me, he was giving me instructions of how best to, to handle that car. Mm -hmm. And how did you come up with this idea? Um, well, it was, it was ac ac I think the originator, I think actually, was a chap called John Fitch, okay. an American, and who did a touring car rather than a out -out sports car. But I think it was his idea. Okay. And it wasn't an actual toilet roll or loo well, roll? It was not exactly a, a, to a, literally a, a loo roll, but it was a thing uh, which is about that big. Okay. Uh, that, that thick. Uh, and in, in there were all these notes that we'd made in practice. Because it takes two... See, the thing you've got to realise with a Mealy Mealy, it took two, two, two days to do one lap. Wow. In, in normal circumstances. And, and uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, doing a thousand miles in a day is not, not easy. So, so it must have taken an awful, an incredible lot of preparation yeah. To prepare this yeah. thing, it, it took. I think the the toilet roll, which was a, uh, Jinx wrote it by hand, obviously. I think I'm right in saying it's 21 meters long, something like that. So, so to, if you have this thing with 21 meters long and and you obey its every 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 instruction, then hopefully you'll be fast and not go over the road. How do you sort of get to? to spend all that time preparing this. How do you bring yourself t to, into that frame of mind where you can focus so much on doing well, we, something we, so detailed? On, uh, out, before the race starts, uh, you prepare yourselves and you make these notes that, that, that Jenks, who was sitting beside me, could give me hand signals like that's to the right, to the left, like that, all the different hand signals we had, so that he was reading from this roller map in his in his lap, and giving me hand signals, which was uh, which were then an interpretation of, of what mm -hmm. notes we'd made. Yeah. And as far I th I, th I think, I think John Fish was first uh, with the idea, but it was the same time. So it was 1955. So going that fast on roads that essentially had literally sort of cliffs off the edge yeah, of them. Yeah. You're, you're, you were staking your life on this Gadget. toilet roll yes. <laughs> and, and your guide. Yes, literally. How do you, how do, you do that? How, were you afraid? No, you only get afraid if you do something you don't understand. I okay. mean, so if I, if I go into a corner and made a, and thought, I thought it was faster than it was, then that would be very frightening. So therefore, okay. one had to had to have complete uh, understanding and belief and faith in, in Jenks in the, his interpretation of what of the single the toilet roll uh, was essential, and we did many many laps to get it so that it was perfected. So you practiced a lot yeah, to do this. Tremendous. I mean, you see, to go and to, to do one lap of the mini it was at least two days. And I'm talking now normally. Because it's a thousand miles, you know, and so therefore that's uh, that's quite a while. Yeah. And we and in between, I mean, I'd be racing this weekend at wherever Pescara may be, and then next weekend at another place. In which case, in between the races, we go and do an, uh, laps of the course. So a lot of planning involved. Tremendous amount, yeah. You said that when you understand something, yeah. you're not afraid. Yeah. So is that is that how is 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 that how you prepare for things in life? Do you do you try and understand them before you go in? Is that important? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, it's, it's essential that what the 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 information that Jenks had on the toilet roll thing, 
it's essential that he could read that, not lose his place, and and it, or the big big problem he had, of course, was because because of the speeds we were doing and the cornering force, he was be, being sick because of the tremendous. Tremendous problem, and in fact, he lost his glasses. And thank God, had brought a spare pair. <laughs> but I mean, you know, these are these are ordinary things that happen. Yeah. And uh, you can't, you you don't know they're going to happen. So you've got to be as well prepared as you can. So there's a lot of clearly a huge amount of preparation that went into mm. that. You also mentioned trusting him, and so you prepared. You brought the glasses, the extra glasses, and everything. But you're also trusting him, even though he's throwing up and everything like that. Yeah. So, how easy is it for you to to just trust another human being? What what qualities yeah, well, does that first require? First of all, Jinx was a very weird man. <laughs> he was three times world champion in sidecar. Okay. Uh, yeah, as a passenger, and therefore he had he, he's extraordinary. He has no 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 fear. Mm. I mean, he had complete confidence in what I was doing. I had complete confidence in what he was telling me, and otherwise it just wouldn't have worked, and we, you know, you would uh, get killed. Wow! So complete trust between the two of you because of that experience, and you both and essentially also, also staked your life Don't on each the other. Wreckage we, with the wreckage we could do because the roads are open all the time, and. Uh, so therefore, in between the main races that we were doing each week as racing, we would go to Italy, and then we'd go and do another lap, and then you probably get might get two laps in, in in the in between one big race, Formula One if you like, and another one. So it sounds like there's there's a lot involved in planning something Tremendous. like that. Yeah, that is that is the thing. We, you've got to put the, the words down, or had to put down. He, he did. They weren't just words. He'd draw pictures and so on on the roller map, and and to be going along at that speed, uh, you c couldn't have any fear. I mean, I I was I wasn't frightened because I was driving, but uh, and therefore this I made a mistake. Uh, you know, everything was okay. But a thousand miles at the speeds, I mean, we were doing speeds up to 180 miles an hour, and uh, you know that's fairly sobering. But now you see, we we to practice. If we got up for really early in the morning, so 5:30 or 6, uh, we could do a one, a one lap in two days. Okay. You know, which was quite important. But there were were there other people on the road at that point? Oh, obviously, the roads are completely open. I mean, it's just like all drifting. And uh, in fact, the ro the roads the roads were completely uh, when the race in the ra for the race itself, the roads w weren't closed. But the, the, the trucks, everybody knew it was going on. It was a big you know, because it goes from one end of, of Italy to the other, you know, and across and. Uh, and uh, so therefore, but you did it, and I thought you did it in ten hours. Ten, ten hours, four, four minutes, and what? Just just over ten. Just over and ten minutes. But that's something that would normally take two days to drive. Yes, that's you crazy. Quite far, you go quite, you go quite fast. First car went at night, nine o'clock mm -hmm. at night. And then every half minute, and another car would go. Yeah. And at midnight, it was one car every minute. Mm -hmm. And the and you you go along you go up on a ramp, and then when they drop the flag, a car, a car um, would go. Uh, a few hundred cars took part anyway, and uh, it was it, it, it quite extraordinary. And so, where were you? One of the first cars to start, or no, were you further back? No, we were further back because it was the first. The first car was a. Went at nine o'clock at night, and that was uh, things like little Fiat five hundreds and so on. They, they were so they let the slower cars go first. Yes. Oh, yeah. Why? Because the fast ones can't catch up. You see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then the fast ones have to always overtake yes, things exactly. on these very dangerous exactly. roads. Yeah, but at least the guy, the guys usually got, got out of the way. No flag marshals, because if you put a flag out, you know, we wouldn't have seen it. We started nine o'clock at night, and so we had. But if you were a late number, my number was seven two two, which means that I went at seven 
22 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I left, I went down the ramp. So I didn't have any... So it had been starting at 9 the night before, and you didn't start until 7, 22 in the morning. So does that mean that when when you start racing, it's really... You don't know who's won until everyone's time's been exactly. counted. I didn't know I'd won, and, and for, for sure. We had a pretty good idea, but we did not have, know definitely that I'd won until seven... Well, we had to wait seven, about eight o'clock in the morning, I suppose. How was it waiting? How did it feel, waiting to awful, know? Awful, awful. <laughs> Because we, we get a certain amount of information going through. But they, they were obviously in telephone contact, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. And are you, at this point, are you asking other people for whether they think that, uh, how, what times they've done or things like that? No, no, you just, everybody would just go around and sing and then, then go away. But obviously, as, as you've got, uh, if you've got, I mean, there was, there was, we had some cars were even faster than ours. I mean, ours was fast, 180, but they had cars that were even faster than that, the big, bigger Ferraris. And so you were worried that they might have won. Well, you see, and because certainly we wouldn't, we wouldn't know where they were, mm-hmm. because although, although we knew at the time they started, we wouldn't know where the hell they were. Yeah. Really. And you knew your own time. Yes. Presumably. Because yeah, we start. And you must have known how good that was. Yeah, but but the uh, it was re- we got the, we did the record, so we so we're breaking new ground, really. So you knew that you'd broken the record. Yeah. But. But we didn't. But we we didn't. There was no interest to us to really get to the last last few hours. Okay. See. So, if you'd broken a record, but yeah. you hadn't won. How would you have felt? Um, I suppose oh, pretty good. We felt pretty good. But, I mean, uh, the whole idea was to get in there and try and win it. <laughs> that was it. So winning is very important. Oh, oh, very important. Why is winning so important? Because it's a challenge. And uh, if you have a challenge, the person who is winner is obviously number one. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, so in this one, we, we see we, we didn't go till as I said, seven twenty-two in the morning, and and all, we had all those cars in front of us, a tremendous amount. What's important about being number one? You mean being number one is nothing unless you win. But if if you if you come in for, if you if you win the Mili Milia. That's a fairly important thing to do. Yeah. And the Targa Florio and things like that, you see, is different. So, if, let's say if you've set a new record, you've still done something, you've done something that no one has done previously, yeah, so it, yeah. it's unknown ground. Yeah, yeah. But you, you want to win more than anything, right? Yeah. Why? Why? Because the whole idea of competition is to have the, the pleasure of being faster than the other people. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's just, just gives you a great feeling of, you know, of um, success, I suppose. A feeling of success, a feeling of satisfaction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I read that you, you've been in a competitive family from a very young age. Yes. Y- your family. Do you feel like competition is in the blood? Oh, very much. I mean, my, my father raced, and he raced at Indianapolis as well, and in Brooklyn, and stuff. But, but I, I was brought up, really started, I started when I was 16, in 500cc cars, so this small cars, and did hill climbs. Mm-hmm. And then, great, because it was uh, following the war, of course, there were no racing in the war. And uh, so that, that was the sort of life it was. So, you don't seem, you, you talked about understanding, and you don't seem to be very afraid of danger. No, uh, the, the, the trouble when, uh, is that in my career, cars were not nearly as strong as they are today, mm-hmm. and I've lost, uh, I've had, I think, about five, wheel, five wheels come off, and uh, all sorts of, sorts of different things, and uh, that is pretty... Uh, 
It's pretty frightening. And you've been injured a number of times. Yeah, many times. In all of that. Why didn't the injury put you off? Why didn't the danger put you off? Because of the the chance of success is greater than the, 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 than the downside. So it's a calculated risk? Yes. The chance of success yes, exactly. versus exactly. the downside? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've noticed that when you get injured, you are incredibly focused on healing. Yeah, well, it's because I want to get back to, to you know, <laughs> what I love doing. Some people don't manage to have that. They start to feel kind of down. Do you think that's me? Why do you think that is? I, th I think it depends how much success means to you. Okay. I mean, from my point of view, I mean, uh, and what, what, winning the thing in the, with, with the Mercedes well, it was... In 1955, I mean, it was for the first to to win that race, you got to have a really good car. I mean, when you talk about the distances and the speeds and the, you know the whole, I mean, the whole thing is, and you got to pass so many cars, and uh, you know it was, it's a very urgent thing to get in there, and then you do, you, know, you obviously want to win it. I mean, I mean no point in taking part just to, for the fun of taking part. <laughs> That's for amateurs. Okay. If you're professional, then you want to really win. So if you're professional, it's all about winning. Yeah. But you've had a lot of accidents. Yeah. And um, a little birdie tells me even that being on the back of a scooter with you going around London is quite a hair-raising experience. Well, those who, are, those who are lucky enough to join me. <laughs> yes, no, now I don't use, I, I now, now I stick to four wheels. It took you a while to be willing to give up the scooter, and I think Susie had to put her foot down at some point and say, enough's enough, because you had quite a few accidents. Well, I, yes, I had a few. Why, did, why were you so attached to the scooter? Why, why did you not give uh, it up sooner? Because, because if you've got a scooter, you can, you can get more done. So it's, it's this efficiency thing again. Yeah, exactly. It's practical. Yeah. Um, you fell down a lift shaft. Yes, because the lift wasn't there. I opened the door and said, I'll see you downstairs. And when you open the door, you just automatically step forward because normally you have a lift, in the, a lift to take you. But unfortunately, it was a mal it's a malfunction. And you've recovered from that. That, that, with that, with all of your injuries, you must have phenomenal genes to to repeatedly recover. Yes, I I must say I have da I have damaged myself a bit. <laughs> I've, I've broken my back and my legs and my arms and yeah, yeah. Those, those are part and parcel of the business I'm in. Do you care about your body? Yes, from the point of view that that if I damage it badly, then then I have to stop what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So therefore, yes, I do. So it's all about what you do, but you care about your body because it's a vehicle to yes. allow you to do what yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah. It sounds to me like there's not much that you're afraid of. Um, in the business that I know, no, I, hadn't, I, I was not really afraid, but occasionally, I mean... Um, I knew how dangerous it was. I know how difficult circuits are, and you, I mean, and because, see, I mean, I did oh, hundreds of races, and uh, there is a, there's always a danger at your sh on your shoulder, you know, and therefore you have to, I think you have to make sure you've got the right sort of car, the, 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 the backup you've got, and so on, all those sort of things are important. Is there anything you're afraid of? Um, yes, I think, uh, yeah, things like snakes and so on. Okay. Uh, you know, the, those sort of things. If, if you're talking about in, in life, yes, I'm, if I don't understand something uh, and I haven't got confidence about it, yes, then, then the, I back off. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I know my limitations and, I, and I'm prepared to drive right up to the edge of it. Mm -hmm. But when it gets beyond that, then then I back off. 
So you know your limitations and you're willing to go right to the edge of it. Yeah. Do you think that's how you grow and achieve most? I think from my point of view, for me, yes. Yeah. It's quite rare to, to be so fearless as a human being. I, I suppose there are not that many of us. Yes. <laughs> I suppose there's... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And in your personal life, is there anything that you're afraid of? Uh, no, the only thing is losing loved ones, things like that. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I'm afraid of things like that because because the life that I that I managed to carve out for myself um, is exciting. <coughs> Not as exciting now as when I was competing, of course, but. but uh, I'm very lucky cause I, because I, I have a, a name and a reputation which helps me an awful lot. And, uh, and, and the, the even better thing from my point of view is of course uh, literally everything I do, I do with Susie. Mm -hmm. I mean we go, if we're going on a, well, we've got a rally coming up in, in, uh, in um, Japan. Yeah. I mean she'll be coming along to that. And, uh, you know, so many things like that. We do, we do those things together, and that, that gives me a great fe feeling of satisfaction and pleasure. So, so it sounds like working with Susie is a, is a good thing because not everyone could work with their partner. No, how no. is that for you? Very, that's very easy. I mean, uh, we we get along. With the, the first thing we were is f we're friends, and that's the first thing, and, and then. Then all right, they, they get stronger and stronger. But uh, I'm very lucky because I met her when she was four, so that's quite quite a long time. And uh, so, so that, and our lives, we do understand exactly what we do. I think we we, we share tremendous mm -hmm. amount. Did you know each other all the time she was growing up? No, no. I, I met her uh, when she was four or five, but then. Uh, then I, I dated her sister first because her sister is four years older than she is, uh -huh. and uh, so there, then um, I, she came to England because her father was in in uh, in um, she was brought up in fact or born she was born in Japan but brought brought up in the Far East, and uh, and so I used to stop off whenever I. Go, when I had to go racing in Australia, Australia or anywhere, I'd stop it and see them. And then, then she came over and, and moved over here. Her father retired, and uh, so that worked, worked very nicely. And you had two marriages before Susie that didn't work so mm. well. Um, what do you think makes the difference? Well, my, the second one was a, the second my second marriage uh, was. Really was ridiculous. I mean, it was. Uh, I think I think I'm not a, not a, an easy person to live with, and uh, I think the 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 first person was Katie, and it was a very romantic sort of time. I mean, the way I met her, I'm standing on the on the pits at at, at Le Mans. And uh, waiting to go out there, and I was looking across, and the cars were coming past very fast. And uh, I saw this girl uh, the other side, so I beckoned, you know, like you come over here. And she went like this I haven't got an armband, so I held one up and said, Okay, and I met her, uh, uh, you know, and when she actually literally had a little more. And uh, so that was a start there. And the other one was in America. I shouldn't have. That was my own fault. It was. Um, um, I mean, the, the lady that I married was an American, mm -hmm. completely different lifestyle and everything too. And so that didn't work. And the third one, I think, is fantastic. And do you think the the friendship that you had with Susie to start with is something that made a difference? Oh yeah, very very much, very much. I mean. We have so many things that we share together, we enjoy together, and uh, and now, of course, we we, we travel travel an awful lot, doing things, and, and we have a fantastic life, really great life. I mean, 
I'm surprised I can <laughs> pay for it. <laughs> no, we really do have a great time. So you, you mentioned that losing loved ones was something that you were afraid yeah. of. Well, that, that was happening quite a lot. The thing you've got to realize is in my era, we were losing three or four drivers every year. And, uh, and yet I didn't, you know, I wouldn't stop. Because I, because I love doing it and so on. I could co cope with that really by saying if it had been me, I'm sure that I wouldn't have wouldn't have driven that way. In other words, I'd have gone a little bit wider on into a corner here or a bit closer here and so and so I, so I just made excuses that 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 um, they weren't probably fairly they weren't genuine, but they convinced me. I was able to convince myself. That um, if I had found myself in the position of the driver who just got killed, I'm sure I would have, have been another foot out here or there. In other words, I, I could, I had the, I had confidence in that, that my ability would help me through the problem I was facing. Okay. When those people were friends of yours, though, I mean, were they often friends of yours? Oh, yeah, oh, oh no, I won't say all the time, but yes, nearly all of them. Anybody who did Formula One, you know, would, would, and sports cars and so on, have, have a, a bond, really, a fairly close bond. So what was it like just emotionally to lose those friends? Pretty bad. Pretty bad. I, I, I mean, I was racing because I love, I love racing and so on. And, 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 I, and I think I was pretty good at it, so I felt that I had a, a safety, a bit of a safety net. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just making excuses, really. Yeah. But if you're so close to it, you don't see it that way. How do you see it when you're so close to it? Well, you just see it that that if it if it was you rather than me doing what happened to this particular corner, that that. You would have made the mistake. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. That that explains sort of, I guess, how you deal with your fear of death. I don't. I don't know. Are you afraid of death? Yes, terribly afraid of death because I love life, and so that means means I'm afraid of death. Yeah. But there's nothing one can do about it. I suppose it's a, it's good news. It'd be awful, awful if you knew. If you knew that in just a couple of weeks you're going to die, it would be terrible. So it sounds like you're living life to the full, that's, which that's takes you to the edge, almost to the edge of death. Yes. And yet, and so you, you're dealing with how you would live in those situations. Yeah. But what about the loss? Just, just the simple human loss of the friend. How did you cope with that? Or, or was it really about... Figuring out the process. No, it was. I mean, the trouble was, was people would die, would die. Well, it, now thank God, motor racing is pretty safe. But then it was not safe. It was very, very, very dangerous. But then I got my pleasure from challenging you to do what I've just done and try and do it better. Mm -hmm. And I and I would invariably think, well, I, that wasn't bad. You did a pretty good job there. Can I ask, was there an element when people died, with obviously with kindness, but was there an element of this is what we signed up for and we knew the risks? Yes. Yeah. Certainly was. I mean, a very selfish sport. Why do you think it's a selfish sport? Because, you're, you, because it's something you can't really share. Mm. I mean... It's living life. It's a face of sport because because it's it's, for, it's all for you, mm -hmm. and uh, and not the others. They can't share it. Mm -hmm. And is it important for you to share life in other ways? Yes, I think because I think life is is to be shared. Because I think. That that friendship is a very important uh, commodity, and I think if one has friendship, true friendship, it's a very, very important thing. And and, uh, 
uh, one's friends mean an awful lot to me. Um, you just mentioned that you thought motor racing was a, was a selfish sport. Do you think that to achieve what you achieved, you, you almost had to be selfish yes. in life? Oh, certainly. Can I mean, you say you've got to be number one, and I want to go first. <laughs> and you, and that's the way it is. If you don't like it, don't play this game. So how important in that is your team? Is the team? Yes, the people who support you. Oh, very, very important. I mean, because, because they're... They're supplying me with a with a car with which I can demonstrate my skill and so on, and uh, then that's pretty that's pretty important. I mean, when when you go out and you you go and you lap certain circuits and so on, um, some of them are far more dangerous than others, but uh, the 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 point the the problem with racing really. Is that to be to be successful? You've got to be a bit ruthless mm. with yourself. I don't mean ruthless with the car, and but ruthless, ruthless in what you're doing. Can you say more about being ruthless with yourself? What does that mean? Well, ruthless in, in this way means that if you're coming into a corner with another driver. You've got to have conditioned him so that he will give give way before you will. Mm. How do you condition someone to give way before you will? By being fast. Mm -hmm. By enjo enjoying competition. Mm -hmm. By um, being selfish, I suppose it is very, very selfish, really. Mm -hmm. But that's where you have to be tough. Mm -hmm. It's not a sissy game, you know. I mean, okay. racing cars on the limit is is dangerous, exciting. Um, it's what it's all about. You have a reputation for being very honest yeah. and having a lot of integrity and that cost you in in sort of when when you stood up for Mike Hawthorne for yeah. example yeah. and told the truth about what you saw would you do that again yes why because i think it's right i th i think Yes, I, I, I must say, I, I would be proud to have, really, to give up certain things. And I think that if those certain things happen to include your upbringing in the way you are, your attitude and your, those sort of things, it, um, then it matters. Mm -hmm. Is there something about knowing that you've won fairly and squarely yes if you I think that if, if I would win a race because some somebody else's misfortune that that is uh, unfortunate mm -hmm. and I, I you know I, I think that I think one has you've got your own principles and you know you know where you're right and where you're wrong and those principles you have um, to live more with. important than winning? Yes, because you have to live with them. Yeah. So I'm getting a picture that actually living life to the fullest is what's really important to you. Yeah. Yes, li life is to be lived. And uh, I mean, obviously, as, as time goes on, there's different, different changes quite a bit. I mean, the, the thought of me doing the, the things that I was doing now completely obviously I completely mm -hmm. impossible um, but but when it, when it is possible running as close to the limit as possible is very exhilarating mm -hmm. yeah mm. so you've talked about being ruthless and we've talked about the importance of honesty and integrity how do they fit together 
by principles. By principles. By your belief, your understanding, your interpretation of life. What is, what is right and what is wrong. Do you think that people nowadays have less integrity than they used to? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know, it's changed so much. The whole ethos of the, the whole thing is so different to what, to what, is, what is accepted now and was accepted. Mm -hmm. so, so far apart, really. Um, that's as far as it goes. Okay. Is there anything you miss about the old days? Yes, I miss I miss the competition. But but I mean, I can understand why it's not there because I mean, I'm just obviously now not physical, physically or mentally equipped to do what I used to do, and so I do miss that. Because it's, it's because it's so rewarding. See, losing is no fun. You know, you've got to win. <laughs> you can't mess around with losers. And uh, so, is fun sounds like it's pretty important. Yeah. How do you have fun nowadays? I suppose nowadays I have fun really by. Uh, Do we have fun? I think we have fun now by literally by being together. Really, I think the the biggest loss to me of anything would be if, if I lost Susie. Mm. And uh, that is something of which I don't even want to think about it. You know. Can I ask the question? You can, are the ways that you find you can compete now, even though you're not racing, considering how much you spoke of competition, how much you miss it? Yeah. Is there a way that you can compete still? Is there any way I can compete? Compete. 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 Do you have another? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, there are, yes. Yeah, life. 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 I mean, it's just you know. I mean, running the business, running my business, um, hopefully successfully, uh, and. Hopefully, by you know, enjoying what one's doing. I really do enjoy, enjoy my day-to-day -day life. Really, your career has changed over time. Yeah, um, and you've done a lot of different things in the early days. You worked in the hotel industry. You rode horses. Yeah. Why? Why motor racing? How did that? What stood out about motor racing? The challenge. The challenge. The, the the fact that one has the opportunity of beating other people mm -hmm. by competing against them and doing it with honesty and doing it with enjoyment. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a success is easy to enjoy. Mm -hmm. If you've got, if you have success, that makes it a lot, lot more worthwhile. So it was challenging and fun, and you had an aptitude for it. So yeah. there was success. Yeah. 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 And then after the accident, it wasn't possible for you to to carry on the way you did before. Yeah. So how did you choose what to do next? I I was very stupid. I I. Went and t t tried my because of the press here, the pressure of the press. Are you going to race? When are you going to race? I made a decision. I think a year too early. Mm -hmm. I think I should have waited another year, and I might have. I might have been. Uh, I might have got back to where I was. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, so you you can't. But uh, it's certainly. I'm, I'm, I miss competition, but you, but you can get competition in life, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you can, if you, you know, if you do something, 
if you if you do something where and you feel proud of it or happy about it or you paid off or what have you, all those things come in and and make life, you know, more, more acceptable. Okay. So there are, there are things that you miss and you feel like you you maybe made a decision too early, but how did you decide what to focus on? After that, what what your well, new uh, kind of yeah, pursuits would be? Yeah, I was in a difficult be. position because here I was selling something that I had no longer got. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, in the, all I had to flog really was a was, a, was a, a reputation and 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 those sort of things, but that they, but they're not really tangible in the same way that other things are. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, you know. To, to to really th thank God I, I had made a reputation by the time I had the, you know had my big big shunt because of, because that gave, opened a lot of doors mm -hmm. so I've really been very lucky you know you've worked hard for it too yeah, I, yeah but I enjoy the, I enjoy that sort of work yeah if, if, if it's anything benefiting me I enjoy it. <laughs> But you you do a lot to do with property. So how did you decide to do that? Well, pr property. Um, my father was a dentist and what have you, and he, he, he retired, and therefore I had quite a bit of pr property which my, my father left to me, and um, which had been surgeries and all that sort of stuff. And so then I put put together a plan to sort of. Um, modify them and, and change them from the way they were so that they were commercially a, a viable proposition you know so that, I mean I just they weren't just surgeries they were, had accommodation above and all that sort of stuff it's just a case really of, of, um, of looking at what I got and seeing what I could make of it so you kind of fell into that yeah yeah literally okay. yeah um, what advice would you have for people starting out who aren't sure which direction to go in on, on how to choose a direction? I would just say one thing is go tread slowly. Tread, tread slowly. slowly, yeah, because if you rush into something, it's quite often not the best thing to, to, to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my advice really would be to anybody really would be, you know, Look at it and evaluate it, and then put your foot in, and and and, you know, and then achieve what you what you're seeking. So tread slowly, and it sounds like then explore a little. Yeah. Take some time yeah. to explore. Yes, exactly. And then once you've once you know what it is you want, then I yeah, guess you in. just yeah. go in full wholeheartedly. Yeah. 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 And. I wanted to go somewhere a little bit different to talk to you about learning because um, I remember hearing that you used to follow on some courses Fangio's line at some point. Yeah. And I'm wondering what, how important is it to have someone that you, that you respect, that you look up to, some, someone that you can learn from? Oh, enormous. I mean, Fangio, Fangio was the greatest Formula One driver. Certainly, I competed him in sports cars, but in, in Formula One, he was certainly the finest. And uh, he would he would allow me to follow him really closely. We were nicknamed the Train. I mean, we were literally going around circuits like Spa and Monaco and all that. So then, and, and he he would let me sort of sit there and. Um, I mean, I remember Neuber coming up and sort of saying, well, what ha you know, what's going to happen if, if Fangio crashes? And I just said, well, Fangio doesn't crash, he's the best. And so it worked out all right. Yeah. Was there anyone other than Fangio that you looked up to? Not with the same amount of respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, Fangio was a gentleman. He was a, a fantastic driver. And... Um, Unfortunately, of course, I've never spoke to him because he could only speak Spanish, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I'm sure, I'm sure he had a piece of my girlfriend at Le Mans actually. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy competition. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so you and Fangio were in the same team at Mercedes. Yeah. And there he was number one and you were number two. Yeah. And then you moved to Maserati. Yeah. Was that because you needed to be number one? No. Or why did you move? I moved because Mercedes pulled out. Okay. I mean, otherwise I'd have stayed with them for forever. I mean, they're the best team in the world. Okay. Really, to race for. And, uh, yeah, and that's just certainly it. Why were they so good to race for? They had the best car, a bit like now, really. They had mm -hmm. the best car and, and very, very good team and, uh, you know, and Neubauer is such a, uh, um, a character. Mm -hmm. And, um, but they looked after the, the I mean, if, if you won anything, they'd take 10% of the money and give to the mechanics and the driver would get the other 90%. That's brilliant. You know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, they paid, paid well. And there, there, there's no, no downside at all in, in Mercedes, none at all. Mm -hmm. At some point, though, you enjoyed driving for a British team in a British yeah. car. How important is being British to you? Not so important now. Okay. Um, what changed? That was my life. Um, and, and now being British, they're just, they're just, it's, we're not very patriotic. Okay. And. Uh, we as a country, or you and Susie, or. You no, know, I think I think we, we as a we as a country really aren't. It's not nearly as as, as as not nearly as British as it was when we won the war. Mm -hmm. You know. So there's something about winning the war, everyone pulling together yeah, at that time. Yeah. We were very British, but not so much now. Yeah. 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 How do you feel about Brexit? I think we did the right thing to get out of it. Why? Because I think we can stand on our own feet. Mm -hmm. I think that... Uh, I think that... This is the greatest country in the world. And I'm, I'm sure that with the... You know, that, 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 uh, that we can handle it, getting out of it, really. What makes us the greatest country in the world? Because you're in the middle of it, in London, centre of the world. <laughs> <laughs> By definition. It's quite. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a couple more th small things on um, money. How important is money to you? Very important so that I can live the life I want to lead. Mm -hmm. um, to be a triple, triple with four, you know, or multi multi-millionaire, that, does, that is something I can respect other people achieving it, but it, it, it doesn't, it's not that much to me. In, in, in long, I mean, I've got a fantastic house in the middle of London, south facing, you know, and this is what I do. I bought it as a bomb site and made, created what I wanted. And um, so, so that's all that needs to be. Okay. So what do you think of the huge amounts of money that are in sport? Well, one's always, you know, always think that I'm at the wrong time. <laughs> you know, I mean, now, I mean, Lewis gets what... 20, uh, 50, 50 million a year, something like that. Well, I missed out on that one. I can't, I, I'm not jealous particularly because because I know it's not there. But uh, you know, the thing is, the most important thing really is, is um, we we enjoy life. Yeah. And I think that's pretty important. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you remember a time when you weren't well known because mm -hmm. your fame came quite young. Yeah. So I'm not sure this is a fair question, but what impact do you think that fame has had on your life? Oh, I think a lot. 
And I mean, the fact that I can call up most places and get a table, you know, all the sort of ordinary humdrum things like that and so on. Um, it, it, it's, you know, I mean, that my name and, and being knighted mean an awful lot to me because I feel that uh, I'd like to hope I'd served it, mm -hmm. actually. What does being knighted mean to you? What does what? What does being knighted mean to you? It, mean, it means a lot. Um, I'm very, I'm very um, proud of being knighted. I'm glad I did have a beat to Jackie Stewart today. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the recognition and you yeah. got it before Jackie Stewart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Double whammy. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. If you were me, which question would you ask you? You know what's coming after that, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, you see, I'm at the point in life now where um, I'm glad to say I've been fairly successful in, in, in business and I'm happily married, which is probably the most important thing of the lot, actually. I'm f sure it is. Uh, I, can't, I can't think there's anywhere else I'd rather live than London. And if we enjoy, you know, sometimes going on a cruise or something like that, and to be able to do that is, is very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, being able to say, well, look, I think we, let's go and have a, you know, two week cruise, three week cruise. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. I have one more important thing that I haven't asked you, and then I will release you because you've been very patient. <laughs> um, you have the most incredible focus. I mean, the focus you had when you were driving, but also the planning focus on what you showed me in the preparation for the Mili Milia. And I've seen you look through keys in a drawer doing something with you, and you are so focused. How did you develop that focus? Concentration. Mm -hmm. One very important attribute to have when you're racing is concentration. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the life that I've had and the amount of races I've done and the all the things that have gone with it. I think concentration is terribly important. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, because I teach people mindfulness, so I teach people partly to balance their attention, because you can be too concentrated and you can you have a wide... Con is there anything you did to train that, or is it just natural? Is it just you? I, I think, luckily, I think it is... I, I like to think it's, I've grown into it fairly naturally. How do you think it serves you in your life, that ability to concentrate? I think, I think it's probably saved my life from times because of things that have happened. And yeah, I, th I would say it's, uh, I've, I feel very grateful to have the life that I've had. Mm -hmm. It would be difficult to do to, to do a better one for me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you say that movement is tranquility. Yeah. What happens when it's quiet? It's tranquil, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so both movement and quiet can be yes, tranquil. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 It feels like you're quite at peace in yourself. Do you feel that? Yes, certainly more than I... Yes, I'm growing into it. Mm -hmm. 
because I think that uh, I think now we can get. I, I like to think we can get an awful lot out of uh, out of what, you know, what life is uh, has to offer still. Mm -hmm. That's important. You said you're growing into it. So was it not always like that? Um. No, I think probably now it's because Susie and I are, are a unit, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that is very important, very important unit, and therefore I think that's, that's the thing that I'm happiest about, mm -hmm. really. Being a unit and having that relationship, yeah, yeah. being a team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.